morning from Kyoto. We're finally here in our third location. So from Hakone, we finished as much of the Hakone round course as we could do, like even with two days, and we still weren't able to finish the full round course. Some people do that round course in one day. I have no idea how. We took the Shinkansen again, and this time we actually got to see the bullet train on the outside. Um, the last two times we were on it, we kind of just got on and didn't really experience what it's like to like see it pass you. And oh my goodness, it was so fast. It's like your brain can't even comprehend how fast it's moving. Like in and out of the station in maybe like, I would say under 10 seconds and it's pretty long. Now the plan is to um, just see as much of Kyoto as we can. We have a few priorities on the list, but we're really excited to go to Nikishi Market. We're also going to meet up with another one of my mom's um, friends from college. Anyway, I'll check back in later. Our first stop in Kyoto was Fushimi Inari Taisha one of the city's oldest and most important Shinto shrines. Shinto shrines are places of worship that house the kami, or the Shinto gods. Fushimi Inari is dedicated to Inari Okami, the god of rice, prosperity, patron of business, and much more. The shrine was originally built in the year 711 on Inariyama Hill in southwestern Kyoto. But back in 816, it was moved to its current location on Mount Inari. Legend says, long ago a member of the Hata clan shot a rice cake in the air with an arrow, which suddenly turned into a white bird that then flew to the top of a mountain. There where the bird landed, rice began to grow. Thought to be a sign from God, the Hata clan built a shrine on that mountaintop to enshrine the deity Inari Okami. Now the shrines have gotten so much shorter and way closer stacked together. So it's kind of like you're in this tunnel of shrines. Fushimi Inari is famous for its thousands of Tori gates. Symbolically, these gates mark the entrance of the Shinto shrine and act like a boundary between sacred ground and the human world. This is Omokaru Ishi. Here you make a wish and lift the rock. If the rock is lighter than you expected, your wish will come true. The fox is thought to be the messenger of the goddess Inari. Along with many stone fox statues, here you can also find fox-shaped wooden wishing plaques, like these. Each of these Tori gates were donated by people or businesses hoping to be blessed with good luck and fortune. Today, there's an estimated 10,000 Tori gates lining the two and a half mile road up Mount Inari. The full hike takes about an hour and a half each way and leads to multiple beautiful shrines along the path. But since we were on a time limit, we walked as far as we could and then turned back to the exit. At some point, we realized we wouldn't have time on this trip to visit the Arashiyama Bamboo Grove on the far west side of Kyoto. So we took a lesser traveled path off the side of the main trail to see the quote-unquote secret bamboo forest, which isn't much of a secret, but still a magical feeling place. After an awesome morning exploring Fushimi Inari, we headed to Nishiki Market for lunch. Market places like this are my favorite places to shop, and this five block long shopping street with over 100 shops and restaurants was no exception. And this incredible place dates back as early as the year 782. Vendors here sell everything from full meals to cookware to live seafood, pickled vegetables, Japanese sweets, you name it. 
With the help of my mom's good friend who's from Japan, we picked some truly delicious food to eat for lunch. Even though this is a shopping street with lots of street food, none of it should be eaten on the go. And you'll see lots of signs that discourage eating while walking. The food here is meant to be eaten at the stand where it's purchased or taken away to eat. So once we were done picking out our meal, we walked over to Maruyama Park to taste everything we got. Everything, uh, every carb you've ever loved. Mm -hmm. There's vegetables. So was this thing swimming yesterday? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Here I'm trying unagi, which is saltwater eel, with rice and rolled omelet. Itadakimasu! Yeah, it is so kawaii. Oh, it's kawaii. Oh kawaii. 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 In the US they say kawaii. <laughs> no, no, they say kawaii. Yeah. Kawaii, means, kawaii means scary. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to say kawaii. <laughs> That's a shot. Kawaii. 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 <laughs> After our delicious lunch, we went to another ancient and historic site, the Buddhist temple Sanju Sangendo. I hope I pronounced that right. I put the name on the screen here so you can go look it up on Google Images because we weren't allowed to film inside. But there's a great big main hall with 1,001 golden statues of Canon, the goddess of mercy. And right in the middle, there's another huge statue of Canon, but in her thousand arm incarnation. This site was absolutely mesmerizing and definitely a must see on my Kyoto list. Hello everybody, um, we are still in Kyoto. We just made the decision that we're going to do a day trip to Osaka today. If you'd like to see our day trip to Osaka, I've decided to create a separate travel vlog for that city, so make sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified for that video. The rest of this video is from our last day in Kyoto. Before we left Kyoto, we decided to grab last minute tickets to a Maiko show. A Maiko is an apprentice geisha, so they're often younger performers and the shows are less expensive to watch than geishas. This was a fascinating experience with elaborate and traditional storytelling. There was music and dancing and beautiful costumes, so if you have time to spare in Kyoto, try to catch a show. Thank you so much for watching this Kyoto travel vlog. If you'd like to see the rest of the travel videos from Japan, check the link in my description and subscribe to my channel. More Japan videos coming soon. We got all of Japan right there. Oh my gosh. This is such a beautiful jacket. We got Fuji up here. We got a dragon on here. Some temples. I think that's a tiger. And then Japan is on the back. I'm gonna show you close up once I buy it. <laughs>